Chapter 19 of The Seventh Most Important Thing by Shelley Pearsall. Officer Billy was right about one thing, Arthur discovered. Despite having the least sweet personality of anybody he knew, she made awfully good caramel corn. And she was also right about another thing. Christmas was a very tough season. The one bright spot was that his mom got the receptionist job. The dentist called a few days before Christmas and told her she could start in January. After his mom got off the phone with her new boss, she sat down on the kitchen floor and started crying into a dish towel because she was so happy. That's what she told Arthur when he came running into the kitchen to check if she was okay. She was crying because she was happy. Sometimes he gave up trying to figure out his mom. Christmas Day was a different story. If it had been up to Arthur, he would have pulled the covers over his head and pretended it was a regular day. But Barbara and his mom were counting on him. So when Barbara poked him in the arm at about six o'clock and whispered loudly in his ear that Santa had been there, he managed to say, good, let's see, in a fake excited voice. He followed his sister's polka dot robe downstairs. Merry Christmas, guys, Arthur's mom said extra cheerfully as they came into the living room. She'd put on bright pink lipstick, even though it was six in the morning and nobody else was around. White Christmas was playing on the record player, and the air smelled faintly of burned cinnamon rolls. Arthur could tell his mom was trying hard to make Christmas nice for them, but it seemed strange, like they were actors in a play or aliens on a planet that looked exactly like their own, only it wasn't. Barbara squealed as she tore open her gifts of baby dolls and paper dolls and Barbie dolls and more dolls than Arthur could be bothered to pay attention to. He'd already been warned about the gifts, how there wouldn't be many, and most of them would be for Barbara. Money was still tight. He handed his mom the small gift he'd wrapped for her. Here, Mom. For me, she said, looking surprised. It's nothing, Mom, really. His mom opened the tissue paper slowly. Inside, there was a small metal flower pot in the shape of a watering can. It's a flower pot, he explained, just in case she didn't get it. I know what it is, she said, still acting surprised, but you shouldn't have spent money to buy me anything this year, not with all that's happened. I, I was fine with nothing. Arthur shrugged. That's okay, it wasn't much. Because the truth was, it was free. He'd found it on the same Saturday he'd found the mirror. It had been stuck in a trash can with a bunch of broken clay pots and garden stuff. The silver spout was what he spotted first. Once he'd managed to pull out the rest of it, Arthur knew it would make the perfect gift for his mom. She always kept a row of African violets on the kitchen windowsill. He was pretty proud of how it turned out, too. He'd glued the shaky handle back into place and polished the metal with some of his dad's chrome polish. It looked brand new. If the person who had thrown out the flower pot could see how it nice it looked now, Arthur was sure they would have kept it. Well, thank you, his mom said, squeezing his shoulders with one arm. However much it was, I love it. As it turned out, Arthur's mom surprised him with a gift, too. She handed him a flat box wrapped in green paper. When he opened it, he found his dad's silver dollar collection. Six mint condition peace dollars displayed in a black frame. I saved these for you. I know your dad wanted you to have them, his mom said softly. A thick lump rose in Arthur's throat as he remembered looking at these silver coins with his dad. He'd taken them to elementary school a bunch of times for show and tell. He'd written a research report about them in third grade called All About Money. His dad had often said, one day when I'm gone, I'll pass them on to you. And now that he had them, Arthur didn't really want them. Not now or ever. And I got something for you too, Arthur. Open it, open it. Barbara flopped on the sofa next to him. For once, he was grateful to his sister for interrupting something. She shoved a roundish package covered with way more tape than paper into his hands. It's a baseball. Did you guess? Did you guess? She shouted before he had the wrapping half off. Thanks, Barbara. That's really nice, Arthur said, his voice cracking only a little. He tossed the baseball in the air and caught it. It's perfect. I bought it with my own allowance money, she said proudly as Arthur's mom winked at him. I've been saving all year. Later, when his mom and Barbara were busy doing dishes in the kitchen, Arthur went upstairs and put the baseball on top of the dresser. He shoved the coins in the back of his closet, though. It was weird how much they bothered him. He wasn't sure why. When his father's motorcycle cap and coat had been in the downstairs closet, they hadn't bothered him at all. In a way, they had made him feel as if his dad was still there. But the coins made his throat clench up the minute he looked at them. Arthur knew his mom was just trying to make up for what had happened in November. He knew she still blamed herself for some of it, even though he tried to tell her it wasn't her fault. She wasn't the one who'd lost her cool and hit someone with a brick. It made Arthur realize how you couldn't always know what things would be important to people and what wouldn't. 
His mom had thrown out his dad's motorcycle cap, thinking it didn't matter. But it was way more important to Arthur than the silver coins she'd saved. And the flower pot had been worthless to someone in Mr. Hampton's neighborhood, but it had turned out to be the perfect Christmas gift for his mom. In other words, there could be a lot of reasons why people decided to save some things and why they threw others away. Reasons that might not make any sense until you dug much deeper. Which, Arthur thought, might be a small clue to the junk man's list. <laughs>